Iceland, the country of fire and ice. So let's go on. Next slide. And Shivansh, would you like to read that first? Yes, ma'am. In Iceland, you can see the country's con contours, contours, contours of the mountains wherever you go and the swell of, of the hills and always beyond that uh, horizon. And there's three strange things. You never shot a hidden. You always feel exposed in that landscape. But it make is it very beautiful as well. And the quote was from Hannah Kent, and I'll read it like Mem Lisa started doing, so you can hear our accent. In Iceland, you can see the contours, that means the shape of the mountains wherever you go, and the swell of the hills, and always beyond that, the horizon. And there's this strange thing, you're never sort of hidden. You always feel exposed in that landscape, but it makes it very beautiful as well. I'm thinking of another landscape where you might never feel like you're hidden and that might be the desert where they have the contours of the sand dunes and uh, I'm not sure sir when you were in Abu Dhabi did you see that type of um, landscape there uh, sir, yes, yes yes ma'am yes ma'am uh, especially uh, when we have gone to visit that uh, part called Jabal Hafid there is a place called Jabal Hafid where uh, you can see the border of oman it is the border of oman from there you can you can see the lightings of oman it's very great mm -hmm. height it is yeah you know so let's look i'm sorry, sorry. i'm lisa another place that you would might feel like that is if you're on the ocean um i remember i've been in a couple different places where you look out and you can't see anything like one time uh, you know, if you're just looking and you don't see land on the other side, you don't see buildings, you just look straight out to sea and that's all you see. Just, you know, like where we live too. Yeah, where the horizon is, where the air meets the land and that's just a straight line. So let's look at the next slide and it's just a picture of what they're talking about. Oh. It's so beautiful. So what, so, those of us that look at this might think, what is that green? And it is actually a type of moss or that takes centuries to grow because of the landscape is so harsh. So they don't have trees, um, but they do have this green moss that's not very thick and you're not supposed to step on it too much because it can kill it. Um, Icelanders say that at one time their land had trees on it but the trees were all cut down during the Viking era for boats. So that's, so you're looking out at a landscape with rolling hills and the horizon in the background and lots of green and lots of black. Well, let's go to the next slide. Okay, Daksh, can you read that? Yes, ma'am. The Iceland's natural beauty is unparalleled. The country is home to some of the most stunning landscapes in the world, including glaciers, volcanoes, hot springs, and waterfalls. The rugged beauty of Iceland's landscape is truly awe-inspiring, and visitors can easily explore it on foot by car or on a guided that word is tour outdoor activity is a ice climbing glacial trekking Iceland has a unique culture with a rich history their tradition are 
reflected in its language, literature. So the capital, I'll say it for you, is called Reykjavik. And what's the population, Dr. I don't think you heard 372,520 people in the whole country. So it's not very populated. Let's look at the next slide, please. All right. Look and see what you see in that picture. Shivansh, what do you see there? Ma'am, British shirts. Yeah. Would you like to read about the history? Yes, ma'am. Iceland was found uh, found more than thousands years ago during the Viking age of explore, exploration and settling by the mixed noise and capitalist population. The early settlement made up prima Yearly of Novering Seafars and Edward's Forest Adventures, Adventurers, Adventurers Forest Trade, Foster, ex for Foster, Feather Foster, Further ex Excursions, Excursions. To Greenland and the coast of North America, which the Narrows called no. Wind Norse. Norse called Wind. But stop right there. So if you look at the picture, you'll see there's a boat with a dragon in the front part of it. You'll see a man standing there with a in the front of the boat with a helmet on that has wings coming out of it. You'll see someone rowing in the sea. And in the background of the picture, you'll see a boat that has sails on it. So those are Vikings. And you might sometimes play games maybe that show these explorers that came from the North country. The countries that they lived in are now called Sweden and Norway and Denmark and Iceland. So they were great explorers and quite brave to go out in these small boats into the rough seas. So that's, um, we'll learn about the geology of Iceland, but it's a newly formed country out of volcanic activity. And so there were no people there. So these people, the explorers, the Vikings actually um, explored that first. So maybe, um, Daksh, can you finish uh, the second part of this, despite its physical isolation? Yeah, ma'am. Despite its physical isolation, some 500 miles or 800 kilometers from Scotland, its nearest European neighbor, Iceland, has remained throughout its history very much a part of European civilization. The Icelandic sagas most of which recount heroic episodes that took place at the time the island Iceland was settled and regarded as among the finest literary achievements in the Middle Ages. So when we took a tour in Iceland, our driver was actually a writer himself, and he said that when they found the Icelandic sagas, it was almost in recent history. And they were very thrilled because most people weren't writing down about these adventures, but they, they did. And so this is a glimpse in times very long ago, like 1,500 years ago, when these people were out in their boats exploring the world. So I will read this. History. Iceland was founded more than 1,000 years ago during the Viking Age of exploration and settled by a mix of Norse and Celtic population. The early settlement, made up primarily of Norwegian seafarers and adventurers, fostered further excursions or 
voyages to Greenland and the coast of North America, which the Norse called Vinland. Despite its physical isolation, some 500 miles or 800 kilometers from Scotland, its nearest European neighbor, Iceland has remained throughout its history very much a part of European civilization. The Icelandic sagas, most of which recount heroic episodes that took place at the time the island was settled, are regarded as among the finest literary achievements of the Middle Ages. So thank you. Next slide. So um, I think it's Duck's turn. Oh, Shavansh, did you want to? I'm sorry, Duck's. I got confused. Whose turn is it? Shavansh. Shavansh, okay. Geographies, geographies and climates. Iceland is located between the Greenland seas and the North Atlantic Ocean. It is northwest of the United, uh, United Kingdom. The land is plateau with mountain peaks and ice field with a coastal line marked by Frojord, which are deep elites, craved and dry eels. Okay, I'm gonna Island is can I just jump in here? That word fjords is a, especially a Scandinavian word, which means mountains that are very high and in between the mountains are is water. So if you were on a boat looking up at the fjords, you'd see very high mountains with snow on them, so steep, like just a cliff on both sides. So why are they there? Well, they're inlets or water that goes in. It was carved by glaciers. And we're going to see pictures of glaciers. Remember there was an ice age and during the ice age, these great fjords were carved out. So Shavaj, did you want to finish the rest of that? Yes, ma'am. Iceland is situated just of the Atla Arctic Circle. The mean temperature is consider considerable. Considerable. You're close. It's considerably, considerably higher. Considerably, considerably. You got higher it. Higher than. That higher than might be expected at the latitude re relatively win uh, mild winter and cool summers characterized Iceland's ocean climate. The average monthly temperature varies from minus 3 to plus 3 Celsius in uh, January and uh, from plus 8 to plus 15 Celsius in July. Okay. Um, Iceland is situated just south of the Arctic Circle. The mean temperature is considerably higher than might be expected mm -hmm. at this latitude. Relatively mild winters and cool summers characterize Iceland's oce oceanic climate. The average monthly temperature varies from minus three to plus three Celsius in January and from plus eight to plus 15 degrees Celsius in July. So you can see um, Canada, Greenland, Iceland, Norway on the map and Russia there at the top, the United Kingdom right under Iceland. So it's kind of right in the middle of the North Atlantic. All right, please go to the next slide. And here it is. And um, Manaf and Sartak, you were not here when I talked about it, but if you look at Iceland at the top of the map in red, the country right above that is Greenland. And recently I did a little research and found out the Greenland at the top is the same size as India and almost the same shape. But the funny part about Greenland is that kids just, in, they always tell me, Ma'am Sue, Ma'am Sue, Greenland isn't green and Iceland isn't icy. And I'm like, what, what? Yes, truly Greenland is icy and Iceland is green. I don't know why they <laughs> call it that way, but let's go on to the next slide. 
Science and Technology. Sartak, you're here. Would you like to read that? Yes, ma'am. Science and Technology. Science, or techno science and Technology in Iceland is well developed with the presence of several universities of research institutes, which extensive inter international collaboration. The quality of Icelandic science is ex excellent, and Iceland ranks among the top nations in the world based. Yeah, and I think let's go ahead and click on that video. You can see a volcano erupting. And the funny thing about that, we'll learn about how often volcanoes erupt there and they're not afraid of it. This is a, quite a pretty organized. video. I liked it a lot. I'll start working on my thesis. Grammarly will ensure you feel confident nailing your final thesis by supporting your writing journey from start to finish. Welcome to Ideation Station. We How do I write the ad, perfect I intro paragraph? We start with understanding what makes a perfect intro. Our journey begins in a nation known for ice, but born with oh. fire. Iceland. This is the world's largest volcanic island and one of the best places on Earth to examine our geological past. Its stunning landscapes formed around 20 million years ago when an underwater volcano erupted and pushed this land up. Today, Iceland is a place of extremes, from cool waters to geothermal fields. The island's heat comes from its location. It's part of a huge underwater mountain range called the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Iceland is one of the few places where the ridge juts above water and the only place you can see the tectonic plates at its heart. The North American and Eurasian plates on either side of this valley are moving apart slowly at about the same rate fingernails grow. But that small movement has major ripple effects. It creates cracks deep underground where magma pushes up, expanding the valley and Iceland by about an inch a year. The plate movement also fuels Iceland's 30 active volcanoes. There's a volcanic event here about every five years. There you go. That was a great video. Yeah, so beautiful. We went to the Perlin Museum in Reykjavik, the capital, and it was wonderful. You'd walk into a room and volcanoes have a certain smell. And so we were surrounded when we were looking at artifacts from volcanoes by this smell of new earth. And they're so passionate about their country because they said, you know, when the earth was new, this is what the earth looked like. It, and so it's pretty interesting for geologists. So let's go to the next slide. And how about, who would like to read that? Siobhan, how, there you go. Economic. Iceland economy is one of the fastest growing in Europe. Drive, uh, driven by fortingo, forting tourism and a strong do domestics demand. There are many jobs open. A presence of absent abundant abundance electric power due to Iceland. We're going to say geothermal. Geothermal. geothermal geothermal and hydro hydroelectric energy source has led to the growth 
of the manufacture sector 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 power intensive in inductive which are the largest complements of the manufacture sector products mainly for export okay i'll read it and with my accent economy iceland's economy is one of the fastest growing in europe driven by foreign tourism and strong domestic demand there are many jobs open the presence of abundant electrical power due to iceland's geothermal and hydroelectric energy sources has led to the growth of the manufacturing sector power intensive industries which are the largest components of the manufacturing sector produced mainly for export and when we were touring we saw aluminum companies they manufacture a lot of aluminum and the odd thing about it is that the raw materials for aluminum are shipped into Iceland from another country the final product of the aluminum is shipped out and Iceland is used only for its power in that so they don't quite make as much money as if they were able to mine the aluminum and produce it themselves but it's a good start to their economy all right let's go to the next slide And who would like, I think Manaf is here. Manaf, would you like to read that? Good morning. I mean, good evening. <laughs> Manaf, Manaf, you have there, not Manaf? had a chance. Manaf? For military? Yes, yeah. There we go. Sir, you were asking something. Yeah, yeah, ma'am is asking you to read this. Yes, 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 sir. Reply now quickly. England, England does not have a uh, standing, uh, standing military. The only member of the of the North uh, African Italian Tira Tricky organism organization member member for which has has is the has this is the part uh, islands uh, island different defines forest forest concepts of the list we're gonna say Icelandic because it's Iceland I, is I, the country Icelandic water Icelanders cause growth which Puerto Brothers Iceland's water is order 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 to meet Iceland Iceland need for uh, picture uh, picture picture time. You, hold on just a minute. If you look at that word, it's very long, but it's two small words that are put together as a compound word. So it means time of peace. So what word is it? Peace time. Good. Preparedness. Uh, preparedness and as uh, as plus um, surveillance and NATO NATO N A T O NATO mm -hmm. pro provides a mission in the country. So if you look at the acronym N A T O, Na we say NATO, not NATO, but that was close. Good. It's actually the North Atlantic Treaty or Treaty Organization. So <clears throat> um, I'll read that. Military. Iceland does not have a standing military. The only member of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization member for which this is the cause. Iceland's defense forces consist of the Icelandic Coast Guard, which patrols Iceland's waters. In order to meet Iceland's need for peacetime preparedness and airspace surveillance, NATO provides air missions in this country. And recently in the news, people were saying, but we're a country of peace and we see jets flying overhead. Uh, be, I forget, like very sophisticated jets, but so it doesn't mean there's no military, but they themselves don't have a military. Okay, next slide. Geothermal. Um, is Doc, can you read that please? Yeah, ma'am. Uh 
geothermal. Iceland has harnessed the potential of geothermal energy, heating 90% of its houses and producing 30% of its electricity with geothermal. Geothermal energy is very important in Iceland, like really 100% on renewable for, for both electricity and housing. The gas guiding used geothermal was also pioneered in Iceland and has created new industry in Iceland through the circular economy mindset of making the most of the each resource. Icelanding expertise in the geothermal is also a valuable export product. Iceland and geothermal energy. In a minute, we'll re look at the video, but geothermal, Iceland has harnessed the potential of geothermal energy, heating 90% of its houses and producing 30% of its electricity with geothermal. Geothermal energy is very important in Iceland that relies 100% on renewables for both electricity and house heating. The cascading use of geothermal was also pioneered or started in Iceland and has created new industries in Iceland through the circular e economy mindset of making the most of each resource. Iceland's expertise in geothermal is also a valuable export product. So let's take a look at the video. I've tried to make all the videos really short, but it gives you us all a good idea of what they're talking about. That is a good news remember, and bad see, news for you. If you are using yeah, Microsoft Office application, things like Excel, PowerPoint, or Word. In Iceland, nature is a challenge, an inspiration, and a gift. Our hydroelectric and geothermal power stations supply over 82% of Iceland's primary energy needs, and 100% of our house heating comes from renewable sources. Iceland is truly the land of renewable energy. Geothermal energy is one of the most important phases of quality of life and economic growth in Iceland. In the beginning of last century, we started building infrastructure in order to use the energy for heating of our houses. Within decades, Iceland had abandoned coal, public health had improved, and economic development accelerated, making Iceland one of the most advanced societies in the world. Since 1967, we have harvested geothermal energy for electrical production too. Today, 30% of our electricity is generated geothermally. In this time, we have acquired valuable expertise and experience that allows us to use our resources sustainably. No country in the world has so extensively used geothermal energy over the years, developing a cascaded approach to the utilization of geothermal energy. Utilizing geothermal for power generation, for direct use, so for heating applications, bathing, industrial applications, food production, and so much more. And the cascaded use of geothermal energy, utilizing high temperature down to low temperatures, has been a tremendous contribution to the economy of Iceland. Icelandic companies and experts have helped develop multiple geothermal projects all over the world. Icelandic consultants are involved in all stages, research, design, construction, and resource management. And the different actors in the field have years of experience working together. With the extensive know-how and experience gained in developing geothermal projects in Iceland, Icelandic companies can contribute greatly to the support of development worldwide. Icelanders are a nation sculpted by the elements. We know that a healthy relationship